What is going on, Pokemon community? It is Achilles018 here, and today we are talking about 10 Pokedex contradictions. I don't know about you, but I find Pokedex entries fascinating, as they normally are littered with terrific information, interesting lore, and sometimes even bring mature, dark undertones to a series that's primary audience is children and adolescents. In all my Pokedex reading, I've come across some double standards, impossibilities, and other inconsistencies I'd like to share with you today. So grab your Pokedex trainers and let's go. Bulbasaur. What better way to start than with the first Pokemon in the Pokedex? We all know this seed Pokemon is born with the plant upon its back, but is it actually? It isn't clear. Bulbasaur's Pokemon Red and Blue Pokedex entry initially says that a seed is planted on its back at birth. Planted? That is an action that has to be performed by someone or something. Who or what plants it? In other entries, including Pokemon Silver, say this seed is present right from birth, which makes it seem like upon being born, it already has the seed. If it's born with the seed on its back, isn't that just part of its anatomy and not something that needs to be added or physically planted? We may never know. Shelder. It's the bivalve Pokemon who, like Tyranitar, also has an urban legend style entry, but this time there's a contradiction to prove it wrong. Starting with Red and Blue's Pokedex, it is stated that its hard shell repels any kind of attack. Seems pretty vague. Most recently, Pokemon Sun provides some clarity to this claim by sharing that the hardness of its shell surpasses the hardness of Diamond. Seems pretty impenetrable after all. Too bad Bruxish proves this all to be incorrect in this Pokemon Moon entry, it grinds its prey to mush with its strong teeth, and it specifically adds that even Shelder's shell is no match for it. Sorry, Shelder. I guess you can't deter any sort of attack after all. Araquanid. Even one of the newer Pokemon in existence has some Pokedex inconsistencies. As you may have guessed, the bubble surrounding Araquanid's head is in fact filled with water. According to Pokemon Sun's Pokedex entry, it uses this as a means of bringing down prey. Quote, It delivers a headbutt with the water bubble on its head. Small Pokemon get sucked into the bubble where they drown. Dark, I know, but it's a circle of life, right? But wait, in the sister game, Pokemon Moon, the Pokedex has a much better natured entry. Quote, Despite what its appearance suggests, it cares for others. It finds vulnerable, weak Pokemon and protectively brings them into its water bubble. Huh? If there's still water in the bubble, wouldn't that weak Pokemon drown anyway? Even the Ultra Sun entry says, quote, When its belly is full, it stores its subdued prey in the water bubble on its head. Pick a side, Arachnid. Pacifist savior of the weak and somehow non-breathing Pokemon? Or aquatic trap monster ensnaring its helpless prey? Who's to say? Magikarp. By far the most humorous of the Pokedex entries we will be discussing today, Magikarp were once somewhat stronger than the weak, weak Pokemon we know today. However, they have been known to jump out of the water for no reason, making them easy prey for Pidgeotto flying over the waters they live in, and that jumping is what we'll be diving into today. According to Pokemon Platinum, a Magikarp living for many years can jump a mountain using Splash. Pretty impressive for any Pokemon if you ask me. But then, in the same generation no less, in Heart Gold, the Pokedex shares with us, it may jump high on occasion, but usually no more than 7 feet. 7 feet? That's barely enough to clear most humans. How on earth is this same Pokemon clearing a mountain? Huh. Must be a pretty small mountain. Zeraora. It approaches its prey at the speed of lightning, according to Pokemon Ultra Moon's Pokedex, and yes, before you ask, it's a real thing. The speed of lightning, it's about one-third the speed of light, or about 220 million miles per hour. Yet, Ultra Sun's Dex makes mention of, quote, even if they dodge its attack, they will still be electrocuted by the flying sparks. Hang on. Before the discovery of Zeraora, the fastest documented Pokemon on record is Ninjask which the Pokedex says is nearly invisible to the human eye, which is more or less 1200 miles per hour. So Zeraora is about 220,000 times faster than the next fastest Pokemon on record, 
What Pokemon is dodging this attack? Ammonite. As the Pokemon Crystal Pokedex tells us, in prehistoric times, it swam on the sea floor, eating plankton. This would make Ammonite a deep sea dweller that never spent much time near the surface of the water. With that in mind, a curious contradiction arises in the Pokedex entries from Ultra Sun, which refer to Ammonite fossils as being found bearing the bite marks from Archaeops, mentioning specifically that Archaeops preyed on Ammonite. I guess Archaeops was uncharacteristically good at diving? Empoleon. This unique water and steel type Pokemon is quite possibly my favorite starter Pokemon when referring to design alone. But this Emperor Pokemon isn't without its flaws though. Reviewing the Pokemon Diamond Pokedex, the three horns that extend from its beak attest to its power. The leader has the biggest horns. The leader you say? If one Empoleon is the leader, then surely they must form groups over which to lead, correct? Wrong. I'm not sure what Empoleon is the leader of, but according to the Pokedex, it is a solitary Pokemon. Here, take a look at its pre-evolution, Primplup, taken from the same Pokemon Diamond Pokedex. It lives alone, away from others. Apparently, every one of them believes it is the most important. Even more specific, Pokemon Black states, because every Primplup considers itself to be the most important, they can never form a group. It seems reasonable that Primplup would carry on this egocentric behavior if not maybe even magnified, into its final evolution. So it would seem Empoleon is the leader of its lonesome self. Tyranitar Starting in Pokemon Gold's Pokedex and being referenced again in Fire Red, the Pokedex says Tyranitar's body can't be harmed by any sort of attack. These sort of invincible or impenetrable defense Pokedex entries are more common in the early generation games but I've always found these a bit ridiculous, as the Pokedex is meant to be an encyclopedia, and those entries seem more urban legend or myth than fact-based data. Can't be harmed by any sort of attack, huh? Interesting. Delmise. Delmise, the sea creeper Pokemon, is said to only go after larger prey such as Waylord, according to the Ultra Sun Pokedex. However, Whalelord's entry from Alola also says that it defends Whalemur when Delmise attack it. Why would Delmise attack a Whalemur? Delmise only likes to go after prey larger than itself, so why would it be going after a Pokemon that is literally half its size? Cloyster. Man oh man, introducing the most inconsistent Pokemon in the Pokedex. I don't even know where to begin, so let's just go back to Gen 1. Starting in Red version, and even in Pokemon Sun, Pokedex entries refer to the contents of its shell as never being seen, which is odd, considering all of Cloyster's Pokedex sprites and the battle stance have its shell open, so mystery solved? On to the next issue. We stick to Sun's entry, which speaks of bombs, literal bombs, not being able to shatter Cloyster's shell. But then, in Ultra Sun, it's divulged that if areas of Cloyster's very hard shell get damaged, those areas swell, gradually growing into sharp spikes. So what on earth is hitting this Pokemon that is stronger than a bomb? Yet, here's another inconsistency. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire make mention of Cloyster being capable of swimming in the sea. It does so by swallowing water, then jetting it out toward the rear. However, looking at Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee's overworld interaction with Cloyster, it seems to move through the water like the clams that we know today, by essentially flying through the water in reverse by expelling water from the front of its shell, not the back. Moving on to the final contradiction, Pokemon Crystal's Dex claims that missiles cannot break its spikes. What's with all the weapons of mass destruction references? Anyway, missiles can't break the spikes, but Pokemon Moon's Pokedex says excavation of the tombs of ancient hunting tribes has turned up many spears tipped with the spikes that had fallen off this Pokemon shell. Fallen off? What about literal missile resistance? Again, what is this Pokemon getting hit with? Poor Cloyster. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's Pokemon content. If you did, please leave a like so I can better understand the content you like and don't like. Want to join the conversation? Leave a comment down below, I do read them. 
Finally, be sure to stay up to date with my content by clicking the subscribe button. That's all for me. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon with more Pokemon content.